Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How to Play series on the French Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 4 duguay Toulon class of cruisers. The duguay Toulon class of cruisers were a class of three built cruisers that were constructed between 1922 and 1927. The three ships of the class are duguay Toulon, Le Mat Piquet, and Primoguet. The design for the class was started in 1919 in response to a possible threat of war with Italy. The class drew inspiration from the U.S. Navy's Omaha-class scout cruiser and utilized the hull shape from that ship as the basis for the class. Unlike the Omahas, though, the firepower on board, on board de Gué Touron would be in four dual turrets con containing new breech-loading 155mm or 6.1-inch guns and 12 torpedo tubes. The class was, was designed to achieve 34 knots using oil-fired boilers with single-reduction geared turbines. One designed downside, though, was the lack of heavy armor on the ship, and the metal that surrounded most parts of the ship was barely over 1 inch or 25 millimeters thick. To compensate for the lack of physical armor, the ship was aggressively subdivided with watertight compartments to improve survivability from both shell hits and torpedoes. The ship also featured a double hull, which is seen in the armor viewer for the ship in-game. If you remove the outer hull sections, you can see here is the inner hull, and then of course the outer hull. In terms of service history, according to the French, these ships served the French Navy extremely well for the time that they were in action. Of the three ships, only Duguay Toulon survived World War II, and like many French ships during World War II, the class was spit between Free French forces and the Vichy French, or Nazi-controlled French forces. Duguay Toulon was sent to the French Indochina in 1931 after completion of her sea trials. She was recalled to the Atlantic to serve on German ship raiding duties as well as counter commerce raiding duties at the onset of World War II. In 1940, she'd be transferred to the Mediterranean Sea and was in the port of Alexandria with Force X when France surrendered to Nazi Germany. The ship was in control of the Royal Navy and disarmed until 1943, when anti-aircraft guns were added to the ship in the form of 15 20mm Orlikan cannons and 6 13.2mm Hotchkiss machine guns. In 1944, this was increased to 20 20mm Orlikans and 6 40mm Beauforts, in addition to radar. The ship was then handed over to the Free French Navy and supported Allied invasions as part of Operation Dragoon, which is the invasion of southern France, and she also participated in the shore bombardments for the invasion of Italy. After the war, she again returned to French Indochina and participated in operations against the Viet Minh until the ship was scrapped in 1952. Le Mont Piquet was deployed to French Indochina in 1935 after her completion of ANSI trials. She was the flagship of French naval forces in the Far East and participated in the January of 1941 Battle of Ko Chang, in which the French Navy launched an attack against Thailand's small fleet. When Japan intervened in that franco thai War on behalf of the Thai, Le Mont Piquet left Thailand to visit Osaka, Japan in September of 1941. She would return to Singapore, where she was used as a training hulk for naval gunfire training, only to be sunk by U.S. aircraft from Task Force 38 during the South China Sea Raid. Primago, uh, sorry, Primage was also sent to French Indochina after completion until World War II broke out in 1939. She returned to the Atlantic until the French surrender in 1940. The ship returned to Dakar and was taken control by the Vichy French there. After attempting to sortie to quell free French forces in Libreville, in the then French Equatorial Africa, she was ordered back to Casablanca, where on November 8, 1941, she began undergoing refit and rearm. A year later to the day, the U.S. naval forces engaged the French ships there under Vichy French control in the naval battle of Casablanca, in which Primago... Prima Gay, wow, I have a hard time saying that word, was shelled by the USS Massachusetts, USS Wichita, USS Tuscaloosa, and USS Augusta, as well as the USS Brooklyn. She was also bombed in four waves of Douglas Dauntless dive bombers from the USS Ranger, which scored six direct hits. Heavily damaged, the crew was able to run the ship towards the shore and drop anchor in very shallow water, where the ship would then sink. 
The wreck was sold in 1951 and broken up from, for scrap shortly thereafter. In terms of in-game play style, the Gaetron continues where Friant left off. The ship lacks the outright ability to angle and mitigate damage due to the thin hull plating and large citadel. In fact, if we pull up the armor viewer here, the ship looks frighteningly like Friant, and there's a good reason for it. You can see here your outer belt is only 16 millimeters thick with a 13 millimeter torpedo bulge, but your inner citadel torpedo bulkhead is just 13 millimeters. This is extremely useful for dealing with HE shell hits that hit you know, your armor belt at close range, but when it comes to armor piercing resistance, this ship has none. At closer ranges, it would be much better for you to uh, expose a complete broadside on this ship against battleships to at least have the possibility of getting, you know, over pens through your citadel. However, I find this to be extremely unreliable and the ship is very easy to destroy. The gun arrangement is exactly the same on De Gaetouron as it was on Friant, but it boasts longer range 6 inch guns or 6.1 inch guns that have only slightly rate of fire. The AP on board is very good at taking out enemy cruisers and will easily penetrate citadels at range, while the HE is okay. It's not the best HE in the game. It does pretty reliable damage against cruisers, but it, I find it less reliable against battleships. In fact, this ship's HE in general against battleships is about as frustrating as Friant's was. The torpedo armament remains largely unchanged and still has the fantastic arcs and 6km torpedoes enjoyed by Friant, uh, and it, uh, you do return to 12 of them. The anti-aircraft is marginally improved, but let's be honest here, as a tier 4 cruiser, its anti-aircraft is terrible, which is pretty much standard for all tier 4 cruisers. Duguay Triant is also very fast for a tier 4 cruiser, and that's not to be discounted as it allows the ship to be extremely fle flexible on the map. The problem comes with overextending, and I find for most people that will be the hardest aspect of playing the ship. All right, let's talk about some stats. The ship has 26,700 hit points, up to 30 millimeters of armor. Woohoo! 4% torpedo damage reduction, which might as well be ignored. Your main battery consists of four dual 155 millimeter 50 caliber 1921 era guns. They have a 15 kilometer range, 12 second reload time, 180 degree turn time of 20.7 seconds. 2200 shell damage for HE, 13.5% fire chance with that HE. AP max shell damage is going to be 3300 damage, and both shells move at the same speed, which is thankful. Interestingly enough, the ship has no secondaries. <laughs> Random fact. Torpedoes, you do have 12 torpedoes. They are in four triple launchers. You have two triple launchers per side. You can see that... One is mounted here, the other is mounted a little bit further back. They are basically in the same location as in Friant. Uh, they have a 6 kilometer range, 57 knot speed, 12,233 damage, 1.2 kilometer detection range. Pretty useful torpedoes in the grand scheme of things. Just 6 kilometers, you really do have to get a lot closer than 6 kilometers to really enjoy using them effectively, though, in my experience. Anti-aircraft defense, uh, six dual 13.2 millimeter 76 caliber guns. Those are of French design. And we have four single 75 millimeter guns. Uh, overall, not very good AA. It starts at three kilometers and drops down to 1.2. Maneuverability, max speed is going to be, let's remove our speed flag here. Max speed is going to be 33 knots, 670 meter turning radius, and a 7.87 second rudder shift time. Detection range by sea of 12.9 kilometers and by air of 7 kilometers. In terms of upgrades, we really only have two upgrade slots to go over. In the first slot, I'm recommending main armaments mod 1. This is going to reduce the chance of your main battery being incapacitated by 20%, increase the hit point pool of it by 50%, and decrease the time it takes to repair them by 20%. It also does those same things to your torpedo tubes. The other options here, if you are out of debt flags and worried about detonations and are willing to take more damage to your main battery, um, 
and risk having them taken out more frequently, you can run Magazine Mod 1 for the 70% reduction in your chance of receiving a Magazine Detonation. Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 really isn't useful, you don't have any secondary guns, and the AA is absolutely garbage. In the second slot, I'm recommending Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% uh, reduction in the risk of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair your engine. You could run Steering Gears Mod 1, which is the same thing as the Propulsion Mod 1, except for, for your steering gears. Either of those two options are really useful. Personally, I'd much rather lose my steering than my engines. Being stationary just makes you a sitting duck, literally. Um, no, that's not a pun on the French tanks that look like ducks either. Ha <laughs> we're in French cruiser. Uh, damage control systems mod one. Uh, it's really not that useful on cruisers, so I don't run it on any of mine. So I recommend propulsion systems mod one. All right. So next up, we're going to look at the ship in a battle video, and I'm not real proud of this video, but well, you'll see the reason why it's there. Let's go look at it. All right. So this battle is going to be... Uh, I believe it's a tier 4, tier 3, tier 4 match. E no, it's a tier 4, tier 5 match. And it is on the map Archipelago, or Archipelago, depending on who you ask. And this is a pretty good low tier map. It offers a pretty good mix of options for those who uh, like islands or like open waters. you got a pretty good mix. And usually, as you guys know, I like to go towards C, but usually via the islands that hover around B. It doesn't matter which set of islands or which side of the map you spawn on. Generally speaking, I find staying there affords you the most opportunities to engage ships at their broadside, which obviously is where they are most likely to take damage. Now, if you remember, the ship is extremely fast for a Tier 4 cruiser, being able to get up to almost 35 knots with the speed flag on. Um, gun arcs are pretty... they're all right. Uh, torpedo arcs are fantastic for those who like to charge things. We also gain Hydro at this tier and a Catapult Fighter. So both of those things increase detection of enemy ships quite substantially you know your catapult fighter is up for six minutes even if it's not providing much in the way of any aircraft what it is doing is it is doing some spotting for you and of course the hydro is the standard hydro it's not uh, enhanced german hydro or anything crazy like that so i think ship detections at like three and a half kilometers or so and torpedo detection is like three i think don't quote me on that i'll get you more updated stats later um so here we are, we are sailing to my favorite spot on this map, and you can see we are already kind of in and out of detection. That's going to be from a ship that is going towards sea, and that kind of gives you a pretty good idea of where that ship is actually at. Uh, by the time it enters into the cap, it's pretty obvious where it spotted me from. But we don't have to worry too much about it at the moment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn ourselves north, and there you can see the Mutski there. That's our Mutski. That uh, was detecting me, and now we're detected by something else, so we might as well get in and engage this Mitski. And, okay, miss on the first salvo. Eh, got a Phoenix there that's engaging him. Okay, we're going to shoot at him, and... Nope, swing and a miss. <laughs> a little evasive little bugger. Trying to pay attention to the battleships that are coming in. Okay, so he's going to turn in slightly. We've gone ahead and shot, and... Ooh! Well, that was exciting. <laughs> um, was not expecting to dev strike, de or detonate, really, in truth, that Mutski, but uh, we did. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and enjoy that. Uh, he's uh, seems like the uh, captain of that ship is a little upset by this, but... Fun and engaging mechanics, thanks, Wargaming. So now we have a couple of options of what we can do. We've got this island here that's, you know, it's ahead and to the right of me. That We're going to go ahead and we're going to try our dangdest to stay on that side. You can see here that I am exposing a pretty healthy amount of broadside. And the reasons for that are, as we previously mentioned, you know, the, the ship's strength. I hesitate to use that word because it's really the wrong word to describe it. The ship's quote-unquote strength is in the ability of the ship to, uh, you know, uh, just eat overpen. So there you can see one overpen for next to no damage from the New York. Thank you very much. 
managed to slam on the brakes. I think had I kept going straight, the ship would have actually missed me entirely. But since we are at this island, since we do have two battleships up here and not a whole lot of battleship support, we do have a Wyoming, but uh, honestly, I don't know what he's doing right now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to try and engage the, the Kaiser. Um, yeah, he, the the captain of that Mutski is still very upset by what occurred, and quite honestly, I don't blame him. Two shell, two shell shatters there. Yeah, the Phoenix might have been closer, but wasn't the the closest at the time or if he was the closest it wasn't him that was causing all of the ruckus there so okay gonna continue to go ahead and engage this kaiser we are not detected it looks like those torpedoes maybe he'll get one out of the torpedo no nope You're gonna miss with all those torpedoes it gives us the opportunity to continue to engage you can see we are up to 16,340 damage just praying for an he for the he to give us a fire or something well he goes down so you know what that means time to move and find ourselves some new targets in this case it's going to be in the form of the new york our Wyoming is trying to engage this T-22, and I don't know what he's doing so close to him, but we'll go ahead and we'll engage the T-22 at, you know, near our max range here to try and uh, at least get him taken out of the fight. And we do manage to land a successful hit that started a fire on him, and then he goes sunk by the Kirov. So 18,085 damage is where we're at right now. Gonna go ahead and we're gonna see if we can't chase down this New York a little bit. Now we got enough speed to actually move about the map fairly easily, so I'm not terribly worried about getting down to the other side of the map to try and help engage enemy ships there. <clears throat> so we do have a, a plenty of speed to do that. New York just isn't in range. Really kind of frustrating. And, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start engaging just to see how far off we are. And in truth, we're far enough out that these shells are going to impact. You'll see they're not going to impact. Uh, they're not going to impact and they're going to fall just short. And we need to get... Uh, there we go. Now we're starting to get some hits. So we're just going to continue shooting at him. Raining terror and trying our best to get a fire. You can see we're doing about 1,400 damage a salvo. That impacts, you know, not too bad, but occasionally you'll get a random salvo like that where you do 363 damage. Woohoo! Or 726. Woohoo! <laughs> Come on, we need a fire here. We're getting shell pens and we're getting, uh, I mean, we're getting impacts. It's not like we're not impacting him, we're just not getting any fires out of the whole ordeal. Come on, fires. 726. Just keep on racking up the damage. And overall, you know, the reload, pretty comparable to Friant. It just, uh, nothing really to write home about. What is interesting to me, though, is it, of all the ships at this tier, this ship is by far the most modern. Like Friant before, you know, you have, you have a very modern ship in this with, you know, multiple gun turrets, turrets, uh, in, in uh, as the only armament. You know, you look at, like... Uh, Phoenix doesn't have it. Uh, Bogatir does, but only four of its guns are that way. It still has a fairly large amount of guns that are concentrated in single mounts. So now we're finally starting to get into a range where our HE is going to really start being effective here. Going to go ahead and try and see if we can't get him on fire. It would be nice to get a fire somewhere in here. Come on. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Now it looks like he's slowing down a little bit. Oh, got an island here. Gonna have to evade. It's only got 3,800 hit points. Ah, finally a fire. So we got our fire. We have an Omaha that's coming in. Now, Omaha is a tier five cruiser, but remember it's based on a tier four cruiser hull or the tier four cruiser is based on the tier five cruiser hull. However you wanna look at that. Down goes the New York. Two kills, 32,302 damage. And our, uh, Kirov manages to detonate their Isakazi. So that's the second detonation in this game so far. Uh, we got ourselves an Omaha coming in. He's shooting AP at us. Something, or now he's shooting HE. Something to be very cautious about is the ability of uh, Omaha to do significant damage. You noticed I switched to AP there, and the reasons why will become very evident. And, hey buddy, how about 13,860 damage? Go ahead and sail broadside to me. <laughs> I 
Now he's starting to angle away, so we need to switch back to HE. Now, one thing I do know is, and you'll see I popped my hydroacoustic there, it's because I know the Omaha launch torpedoes is just a matter of where and when he launched them, and he's turning around to launch the other set, and he's once again going to expose a fairly large broadside. Now, we haven't spotted those torpedoes yet, and I, I don't know if that's because he hasn't launched them or what, but either way, he's now broadside to us, and if he hasn't launched them, well, too late now, he's dead. Now, the unfortunate part of this is we are on fire in two places. Normally, this would be a death sentence, but the recent changes to fires has actually made this less of a death chance than you would believe. Up to 53,767 damage, looking to add some more. Nope. <laughs> Trying to take out this Emile Bertin, but the game ends. <laughs> oh man, there was plenty of opportunity there, they just ran out of points. So 53,766 damage, three kills, we got a dev strike and a high caliber. Overall, this ship... Uh, you know, it's a tier four. It's not my favorite tier four. I'd much rather have my Phoenix. I'd much rather play Akuma. I think both of those ships are better overall, but Degetu Truon is not a bad ship at all for a tier four. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.